OK. So we will continue our last lecture about transistor uh, thermal issue. OK. Now, as we know that, right, transistor have these uh, power losses, OK, during on time, OK, and the switching time. So now let us create this simple, uh, or we call it simulating, to actually see, you know, how you can actually measure uh, these power losses, OK? So power losses in the form of heat, OK? Now, when we look at this, uh, what we call this uh, circuit, all right? So we will first need to create a, I mean, you just need to put a transistor, okay? Uh, any MOSFET will do. We are not creating any uh, new model, okay? Maybe I will just open my version here. And then you need to put a source, all right? A source that go through a resistor. And then we need to have a current sensor, which is the uh, emitter. We will measure the current, all right? OK, come out already. OK, and then you put another voltmeter just across the D and S of a transistor. Now this is to measure the voltage drop, okay, across the transistor during the transistor is turned on. Remember when the transistor is turned on, right? They always have a turn on resistance. It will not be zero ohm. So if it's zero ohm, means that there's no losses, right? It's just like a wire. So there is no losses, then there are no, no heat, all right? So we will put a voltage here, all right? And then, of course, if you want to turn on this uh, transistor, you need to have, okay, a voltage that is applied across the gate. So in this case, we put a control voltage source, and then you can set your voltage here. Okay, you can set your voltage here. So most of the time, the VGS threshold is 10 volt. So we put a 10 volt. So by doing that, of course, the rest is the ground. And then we have the solver, okay, like we did last time. And then we need to know the power, right? Power equation is voltage multiplied by current. So we will take the current and the voltage and we multiply them. So once we multiply them, we will see the voltage, okay, across uh, the power that dissipate <coughs> across this transistor. So now, okay, uh, this is the DC voltage source. I put 24 volt. And I put a resistor of 5 ohm, OK, 5 ohm here. And then the rest, there is no other setting. All the transistors are in default. So in this case, I will just run it first. OK, now you will see the output is around 0 0.97 watts of power. OK, that is dissipate here or power loss. Ah. Now, if we look at the total power that is uh, flowing through, right, you can actually calculate by using Ohm's law, which is 24 volt, right? 24 volt. 
5 ohm. Okay, then you can get the current, right? So you get the current. Then you take the 24 volt multiply by the current. Okay, now if you don't want to calculate, you can actually put another meter here, your display, just to read the current. Okay. Just to put, oops. This one need to move a little bit further. All right. So we run this 120 seconds, which is two minutes. Okay, now you can see it's around 4.7 amps. So 4.7 amps, Multiply by 24, around 100 watt, right? Around 100 watt. So you will have a power losses of 0 0.97 if using this transistor. Okay. So try to do this. Let me see. Uh, I think this one, one second should be able to work out. Only 120 during the heat transfer. Okay, yes. Okay, you can change this to one second because electrically, you know, we can achieve this. So it's pretty much simple, okay. Uh, all this component, you can actually get it from uh, Simscape under electrical, okay. Of course, transistor is under the semiconductor, there is a transistor, and then the rest, you can actually get it under the foundation library. Okay, under electrical. The sensor is the voltage and current is here. Okay, the resistor is here. All right, and the electrical source. Okay, we have the electrical source, which is the DC source is here. If you want to make things much more easy, right, you can actually replace this whole thing okay, by a DC source also can. Okay, because we are not going to make any changes, right? Okay, let's say I, I make the changes now, uh, just to make things easy. Lah. Okay, you can just put this in here. Connect this. And then connect this. Then you need to change this to 10 volt. So I think it will sim simplify the circuit. Okay, you will get the same answer. Okay, this one will greatly simplify the circuit. Okay, once you get this done, right, uh, save it because we are going to use it later. Okay. So just to simplify it, we take this off. So in this just simple measurement, uh, you can actually do a physical lab, you know, on this. Okay, so you can measure the current, you can measure the voltage, right, and then of course, you multiply it, you get power. And you can also, like, for example, just now it's 4.7, uh, 24 volt, right? If we calculate here, 24 multiplied by 4.7, you will get 112, okay? 112.8 uh, watts of power that is flowing through the, the uh, what we call this uh, transistor. And then we minus them, 112.8. We minus them with 0 0.97 watts, okay? So that is 111.83. So if you want to calculate the efficiency, okay, of this uh, transistor, okay, you can just use 111.83 
divided by the power input. Okay, the power output to the power input. Then you will get 99%, 99.14%. Okay, if you are using this transistor. Of course, this transistor is by default. Lah. I don't do any setting. Okay, based on any data sheet, it's just drag from there and put here. So these are the default uh, setting. So if you change what we call this, uh, you know, RDS on, right? Okay, this is the turn on register. Okay, of any, uh, you know, MOSFET, they will give you, let's say I change it to a lower uh, RD on, so you can run again. And you can see that the power losses decreases. Okay, the power losses decrease to 0 0.3. So the R on, okay, is a very important factor to actually, <coughs> what we call it, uh, you know, determine, okay, how good or how efficient is your converter. All right. Okay, please do it and then uh, show me in the chat box. What's fat? What's fat? We are. Where? Okay, let me just change this to default. I think the one I have changed before. Uh, let me check. Oh, the default is 0 0.025. Okay, let's see. Otherwise, you will never get the same power dissipation. Huh? Okay, because that one, I think I changed to... Okay, so the answer by using the default should be 0 0.57. Ah. Okay, what? That's mean you don't do any changes on the MOSFET, just directly drag, and then you should get this. Okay, let's see. Oh, no one. Okay, done yet. How about the physical class? Get, can ah? Should be easy lah. Just to make sure you all familiarize. Can ah? Sama. Uh, sir, for the transistor, do we change anything on transistor value? Uh, don't change anything by default. Okay. By default, you should get this lah, 0 0.56 lah. Because the, the one inside my node, right, I have to do some changes and last time I just saved it. So I found it, eh? How come? Hmm. Okay, we have already one done. Uh, no need to change. Nothing to change. Just track and put, okay? Uh -huh. I got 0 0.02373. <laughs> okay. 
Zero point zero two three seven three ah. I constant is ten. Uh, okay. Your DC voltage is it twenty four watt? Ah, uh, you see. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so the the power of voltage apply right to the transistor make a difference, ah. Huh? And also there is a resistor here, five ohm. Five ohm, okay. Uh, okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, below my yes. So this is also one very important step when you do simulation. You have to ensure that every component you put in right, you must put in the right value so that it will simulate in the you know in the condition that you want, or else right, it, the the result will be unexpected. Okay, so this is the uh, electrical side, okay, of the circuit. Okay, so we start to come see, okay, result flooding in already. Okay, good. Okay, so all this exercise is to make sure you, you actually uh, familiarize, okay, with simulating. Now you start to see the, the circuit become much more complex already, right? This is only the very basic because all the converters have certain complexity there. OK, you need to take care about. Okay, we see another. Okay, coming in. Okay, good. Okay, Dave Phun Hong. Okay, good. Okay, this is just another advice, lah. Okay, uh, for those who do this simulating, right? Especially, I mean, for the class is okay lah. How you connect? I don't care. Uh, for assignment or let's say in the exam when you do the drawing, right? Try to you know draw it properly. Okay, the how I define properly is you know all you, you see when simulating right when you move around right it will help you to like you know match all this properly. Okay, like move this a bit further or you want to make it closer or you know arrange in the way that it looks symmetrical lah, all right like for example try to adjust a bit here and there so that it look nice and e it's not just about nice it's about easy to read okay it's easy to read because if you just simply connect ah, it will make a very simple circuit look like very messy and complicated so okay this is just the same as programming it's a kind of habit if you don't correct it now it will follow until you go out and work <laughs> okay then it will be a disaster <laughs> ah. now example okay uh okay this one okay just now oh okay so like this one you can see that okay uh te, just uh, uh yeah. you know yeah, you see, you just, I mean, why you don't want to draw a straight line? You just like, ping, ping, or, and then you do many pattern, pattern. It's a rushing, rushing. Uh, like I say, it's okay it, doing this. But if you, in the report, you draw something like that, uh, 
you know, you create a risk where I, I may not read it properly. I say, oh, maybe this is wrong, then I minus mark. But your thing is correct, you see. Huh? Mm. Okay, I say it's okay rushing now in the class. For the class, it's no problem. But like I say, in the report, lah, please uh, do it nicely. Mm. And then another thing is that, okay, this is considered drawing, right? When we study this uh, graphic drawing, you all learn AutoCAD. Okay, drawing is very important in engineering. Be it mechanical, electrical, civil. I mean, all top three disciplines, the terms drawing, okay, can refer to circuit, can refer to 3D, you know, uh, what we call this uh, drawing in AutoCAD, can refer to the floor plan drawing. So please bear in mind, uh, this is the general term used in the entire industry especially for your professional and uh, what we call uh, engineer registration, all right? Like for example, in IR, during the interview or whatever, they will use the word, uh, uh, for example, uh, you know, do you have any drawing experience or how many drawing experience you have? Can you show me the, the, draw, the design drawing that you are proud of? Now, this term drawing, right, initially it caused problem for EE engineer. Because to us, it's circuit, right? It's not drawing, right? It's, we call it circuit. So everybody shocked. They say, no, I don't have any drawing. Then they fail in their IR. The same person asked the person, uh, mechanical, do you have any drawing? They say, God, AutoCAD. And they ask the civil engineer, do you got any drawing? God, floor plan. But they ask the same, do you have any drawing to EE student? They say, we don't do drawing, we do circuit. Shit. Okay, make this clear. Huh? All right. The term drawing from the interviewer refer to circuit. You have ton of them, right? Since your undergrad, you don't say you don't have drawing them. That's me, you are telling the examiner, in the four years of engineering, I never even draw a circuit. How you can pass an engineer like that? So make sure that, okay, this is something you all should know. And then it is so important in the interview, you have to show at least uh, a real project with a drawing. Ah, right? So of course, electrical easy. Lah. If you work with consultant, you get tons of drawing. You can ask them to choose. See, lah, pile, you know? Ah. Uh, if you work in the uh electronics development house company right okay that one is very important you please try to involve yourself in circuit drawing otherwise you just sit there and do the component right you know drawing you will be in trouble okay because drawing represent your design capability okay your design capability so drawing again let me just stress again it's very very important and then for those who have drawing, right, we need to submit, right, to the interviewer so they will see. So again, like I said, if they look at your drawing in the way that it's not properly drawn, that means not professional. You are, you are going for a professional interview, right? But you show an unprofessional drawing and you will know what will be the outcome already. Mm. So again, like I said, I don't blame those with this problem out there, okay? Because in university, most of us don't care, right? We just draw, sing it here, sing it there. As long as the number is correct, you get full mark. And then it's also difficult for me, okay? Be because I really very particular on this. Maybe it's because I have gone through the professional, uh, you know, <laughs> engineer thing. So I cannot tahan, you know, when I see this thing, sing it here, sing it there, I, I, I have the tendency just to minus mark. Lah. Of course, from the student point of view, you are un unhappy. You will say, Dr. Ronnie, you are very cookie. You know, you are so stringent. I draw the same shit with other lecturers, I get full mark. Why I, you know, you are talking about the circuit is correct, but not only not look lines. Your argument is right. But think about this. If you think it that way, right, I, I cannot say anything. Lah. 
But when you go to the IR or professional engineer, you show the same thing. You try to argue with the interviewer, see what happened. <laughs> All right, so I mean, try to make this habit, practice it in a good way so that you don't, you know, do that. Lah. Mm. And imagine uh, the whole Power E class has 110 students. When I mark your exam paper, if you don't, don't draw properly, uh, it's, you know, torturing me, you know. <laughs> mm. Okay, now I think uh, we have enough output already. Okay, remember, uh, keep this, uh, save this. Uh, so we move on to the second one. Okay, we move on to the second one of the heat transfer. Okay, uh, this one I explained already. I explained, okay. Now, we want to do heat transfer, right? We talk about the heat uh, resistance, okay? So for the heat resistance, all this information for every transistor are given in their data sheet. You see, the junction to case means the inside, the small piece of dice to the case, and then case to hissing. All right, case connect to the, the back of that piece of matter. All right, and then junction to ambient. Now, in this case, we are how are we going to like simulate this heat transfer here. Okay, so the good news is that uh, simulating allow us to do that. Okay, so I created this one. Uh, you all no need to draw this. Uh, you all just need to put this thing here. So where to find all these thermal resistance? Okay, in simulating. So all the thermal resistance in the simulating, okay, is also inside the simscape. Okay. Inside the simscape, it is under thermal. Okay, it's under thermal. All right. Okay, thermal is actually under mechanical engineering lah. Uh. Okay, so in in the old day they actually park inside this mechanical lah, uh, but now they split it out already. And then you have this thermal element. Okay, now you have this thermal element, right? Then you will see a thermal resistance. Okay. So thermal resistance is, you know, how good it conduct heat, lah, in other words, or to, to conduct this uh, heat transfer. So we need to drag three of them here. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, you connect them in series, right? Because it, it goes through, it's just like if you are connecting aluminum and steel together and you apply heat, how the heat transfer through? Because steel and aluminum have different heat resistance, okay? So you need to like, you know, connect them in this way. All right, you connect them, all right, in series. And then now, it's just like our electrical circuit, it must have source, right? At both end. Oh, so for heat transfer, right? We will have this at one end and have another one at the other end. Okay, we will have this to okay heat source all right the heat source is from here temperature source you drag here and drag here one so what this heat source represent okay this heat source represents junction transmission that's mean the moment you power you turn on right you have the 0 0.5 watt right so the temperature start from here a point of where the temp the heat source and then you pass through okay all the thermal resistance through the another end is what is our ambient temperature okay it's our ambient temperature so now here you double click you can set how many you know uh degree okay for for this example i said 85 all right 85 degree and then here is your ambient temperature, right? We just put 25. Lah. So now you will see that when you have a power dissipation, the transistor inside the die heat up up to 85 and in the heat transfer all the way to this, what we call this uh, ambient temperature. Okay, you see the diagram here, this is the die, right? This is uh, case to heat sink. 
and of course here is the heating to ambient. Now, when we want to measure the temperature, all right, at this point, then we need to put this temperature sensor. Okay, the temperature sensor is actually in between the case to hissing and hissing to ambient. All right. So this temperature sensor, you can find it here. Temperature sensor. All right. So drag it down. Okay. And then this temperature sensor is just like our voltage sensor and so forth, right? And they must have a reference. Okay. So thermal uh, also need to have reference. Uh. So you can go to the thermal reference under element, drag it down and connect. And don't forget to put the solver. This solver apply in electrical as well as thermal. Okay. And then after that, okay, we need to see the temperature. Okay, the thing is that the temperature here is in Kelvin. Uh. Okay, it's in Kelvin. So we need to add 273.15 uh, to, to make it uh, Celsius. Uh. Okay, to make it Celsius. Because this is for scientific uh, simulation, so they, they, they put you know, uh, temperature as Kelvin. So you just add them together, then of course you get the temperature in degrees Celsius. So after putting this, 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 and then it's time to key in this value, right? So the first one, junction to case. Now junction to case here, okay, based on the data sheet. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't know which one I'm using. I'm just simply, I think it's five. Uh, okay. Now, based on this uh, data sheet, okay, the junction to case is 1.15. Okay, thermal resistance 1.15. So, 1.15, okay, junction to case. So, you just key 1.15. Okay, 1.15. And then case to hissing. Okay, case to hissing is 0 0.5. Case to hissing is 0 0.5. You can see it's typical and max, and they are no 0 0.5. Now the last part, junction to ambient is not 62, huh? Okay, now the trick is here when you read data sheet very careful. Huh? It tells you this is a junction to ambient. That's we now from junction to ambient, meaning that is 62 minus 0 0.5 minus 1.15. Okay. So what you get is that at this, the last one is 60.35. It's not 62. Uh. Okay. It's 60. That is without any hissing. Uh. No hissing at all. For the transistor you get, okay, then you put in. And then after that, you can start to, to run this. Okay, you will get roughly like 83.4. Okay, or you want to, okay, heat transfer, right? Another thing is very important is that uh, heat takes time to rise the temperature. Okay, so sometimes if you run at one second, right, it may be too short. Lah. So you may consider like, okay, maybe run a little bit longer, like 60 seconds, see whether it gives you the same result or not. If same means that it already reaches, okay, the highest temperature. Lah. Okay, in this case, yes, okay, it already reaches because there's no hissing, right? Hissing takes time to dissipate the heat. So if everything is correct, ah. Uh, you will get 83.4. Okay, you will get 83.4. Oh, C block is Kelvin. 
273.15 ah to convert it <laughs> uh sir yes in the uh, in the in the data sheet right it actually written the unit of celsius uh, slash w right but in your re resistor right that one is kelvin slash what right uh, yeah lah. correct ah it's uh, kelvin ma, right uh, but that's the, why the at the output or the measurement we have to change it to degree lo? but the data sheet is celsius and we are putting it into the kelvin Okay, this is another thing of the unit issue. This, uh, what we call this K per W of this heat transfer, right? For this transistor, they are actually the same. Now, I really cannot explain why, uh, because I have been searching this, even in the Google, right? It also say that, okay, it is the same. That is the interesting part. Mm. But when I did this simulation, right? When I did this simulation, I put this Kelvin, I convert it back, then it is correct. If I oh. can, yeah. I remember I find one of these uh, before. I'm not sure I'm putting it here. Or not. I think I, I remember I put it in the note here. Ah, okay, it's here. Okay, so this is a issue, all right, of the K and C in the data sheet and this uh, is essentially written in Wikipedia. Okay, where, you know, K equal to C, lah, which also like, I also like, wow. <laughs> hmm. You ask the guy who write this in Wikipedia, I'll see how he answer you. Okay. But the strange thing is that uh, if this is wrong, uh, I don't think Simulink will give you the wrong answer, right? So there is in between about the thermal and the heat transfer thing, uh, the, the unique issue. Okay, let's see how you all get it. Can right, it should be easy, ah. Huh? Okay, we get one of them already. Okay, flooding in, Xiao Chan Hong. Okay, Li Hu An. Another one still loading. Physical class, okay. All right. Okay. Now just don't do simulating only, oh. You have to look carefully what I put here. Equation. Remember, in the exam, you cannot run simulating on your question paper, right? So, unless it's like last time, I remember, I think year 2020, uh, where we have this uh, MCO, all the final year question, right, I changed to like simulating based. Lah. Okay, now, these equations are important. Like, for example, if you can use this equation, right, to actually calculate, lah, if you know the temperature, uh, okay, then you can calculate the power dissipate at the transistor. Okay, like what we did just now. And similarly, okay, similarly, if we know the thermal resistance, okay, and we know the power dissipate, right? And then, of course, we know the ambient temperature, then we can calculate the junction temperature. All right. Now, these are the two things uh, we always need to know. Because the RTH, which is the, the total, uh, right? Which is 62. This is the total thermal resistance. 62. Okay. Total thermal resistance. That means these are this one plus this one plus this one is 62 right and then if we know the power let's say lah, just now we calculate power is what 0 0.5 something and then assume that we are in the aircon room now that is let's say 25 room temperature and then with that right you can actually calculate 
the heat source, that's mean the heat inside the transistor uh, is how much. All right. So important again, a uh, question will be come out in your exam. Okay, so I will ask you, I will show the like I say lah, I will throw a data sheet and ask you to, you know, okay, calculate this and that based on all this theory. So from here, right, now you can see that which one will actually determine, okay, or determine the, the hissing is the last one, okay? Hissing to ambient. Because the last one, you can see that, right? Thermal resistance very high. So in order to reduce the thermal resistance, you need to have a bigger hissing, right? So when you, like I said, when you buy hissing, right, you don't look at how how slick the design is, you know. It's about the thermal resistance, okay? It's about the thermal resistance. So when you change this thermal resistance, okay, to let's say maybe 10, okay, then when you run again, you will see it dropped to 75 or 76 all right it's 10 degree different no? when you put one piece of hissing there mm. so that will actually you know it's a very important okay when you deal with power electronic converter especially now today right the solar charger uh, solar inverter they are so big in size right and they, they heat up so the hissing design are important Okay. Oh. Wan, you are still on the electrical. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I think thermal everyone can do already. Good. Sama Jimmy. Okay, good. All right. Now we have the electrical circuit. We have the thermal model. So how do we combine them? Because you can do a loan of also lah, okay, for the transistor, right? But how do you actually combine them in a circuit or or in a converter that you can do electrical and also thermal analysis? Uh, this one will be require you to do in your assignment. Uh. Now in E and E course, right? Most of the course I see out there lah. Until year four, they graduate, uh, they never touch them. Uh. They only touch circuit design, right? Calculate Ohm's law, pip, pip, pop, pop. Never consider about whether the thing can heat up or not. And then this is actually a big problem. Okay. So that's why in power E, right? I added this. You will look at the cost sound line. The cost sound line also never teach you this. Uh. You look at all the power E textbook, uh, also never talk about this. But throughout my experience, uh, I, see, I see it as a problem. A lot of my design project, FYP or whatever, uh, the student never consider this problem, right? Especially, of course, because you just turn on it for less than a minute, uh, you know, and the lecturer say, oh, good, 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 okay, uh, okay, next, you turn off, you happily go out. But if you run it for one hour, I don't think this your, your circuit will survive sometime. So that's why I decided to add in this. Because this is really a very important bridge, you know. For mechanical students, they study thermal. But it's for machine, motor, engine, turbine. Okay? And then that's all. Nothing wrong. They, they are dealing with all these things. But for E and E, all the while, even since my time of study, right? We, I, in the very fact that I study this during my PLSI study, you know. In UK, they, they, they talk about it because you talk about CPU design, right? CPU heat up. So they actually, they teach us there, okay? But well, I was so surprised how come many of the course they don't teach. La. So I insert this in our class here. So hope that will help you all along, okay? When Even for your future, when you do design as engineer, or even you venture into research, 
This is a very important element. Okay, so now come back here. We already have electrical. We already have this uh, thermal. Okay, now let's move on to combining them together. Okay, uh, this is where you can do the combine. Remember, I asked you all to save your circuit just now. Keep it there. Now, previously, we just see the electrical power losses, right, of power dissipate. Now, how do we actually know the heat of this particular transistor? Okay, now you go to this transistor, right, you will see, hey, I have a thermal port here, wall. Ah, okay. So the thermal, how do you get the thermal? All right, you have to right click. Okay, Simscape block choice. Now, by default, right, is you have to change to threshold base with thermal. When you change this, right, your transistor will have additional orange port that allowed you to do thermal analysis on this transistor. But this one is very important. It's, it it makes it like a hidden function, you know. <laughs> so when you choose this, right, you will notice that you will have, you see, if I remove this line, uh, it will have this additional port here. Okay? So this additional port is come out already. So, okay, now the difference is that I need to double click. Okay. And then you will notice that, right, it will have another tab called thermal port. You click the thermal port, it will tell you, okay, key in the junction to case and case to ambient. Okay, junction to case, case to ambient. So again, uh, this one depends on your data sheet. Junction to case is 1.15. Uh, case to ambient is 0 0.5. So you key this in. 1.15, okay, is junction to case RJC. JC, junction to case. And then RCA, okay, case to ambient, case to ambient. So it's 0 0.5, okay? It's 0 0.5, that's all you need to do, okay, to set this. So after it is done, then you connect this out to a thermal resistance. And this thermal resistance represents your hissing. The hissing, that you are going to put in. Okay, remember by default, right, that piece of metal at the back of your transistor, okay, it acts as a heating, but very low, uh, very high, these are thermal resistant, right? So we can just set, okay, 60.35, like just now, okay, 60.35. And then, of course, after your heating, it actually, through convection, convection, right? It goes through the ambient temperature, which is, oh, we set 35, lah, okay? So that's me now, by doing that, right? At this point junction, you put a thermal sensor, and then you measure the, what we call this, uh, to measure the temperature. So now you can see your entire circuit now, uh, it consists of electrical power, Okay, and it consists of thermal. All right, it consists of thermal. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, this one. Uh, OK, this one I also change the value here because I'm modeling the 540. OK, I'm modeling 540 exactly based on this data sheet. OK. Yeah, 540, right? Ah, yeah, 540. We got 44 milli ohms. Uh, yeah, all the information here. Uh, OK, I actually, yeah, model it. All right, I model it here. OK. So if everything is correct, right? OK, if everything is correct. Then we run. OK, then you will see that when the power. Is 0 0.97. We will have the temperature uh, that heated up at the metal piece of your transistor is 83.5. OK, it's 83.5, which is very dangerous. And you can see the scope. If you put a scope. You see the temperature showed up until here. Now, this is an important point also. Uh, when you do simulation like, like that, right? If I run this just for one second. Uh, I run this for one second. Uh, Or well, you will say, sir, my design good. 28 degree only. No problem, right? Because you just run it for one second. And then this is, okay, let's say I run it for one minute, 60 seconds. Because heat need time to, to, to rise until it's, see one minute is already can go up to 81 already. OK, 81 already. Of course, it's still not the, the highest point. OK. See, it can still, it's still not go to the steady state yet. Lah. So two minutes. OK, so mostly two minutes, it will reach the steady state. OK. So sometimes if you don't know when the steady state, you need to put a scope. Then we'll see, okay, it's almost steady state. Lah. In fact, it's still not yet. It will still slowly rise up but at a very slow pace. All right. So we run at two minutes. <coughs> and then if you based on the equation I showed just now, ah, these two numbers should match. Ah. The power dissipation and okay, the temperatures. OK, let's see. Oh, when it's still on the thermal side, uh, not yet the circuit. Uh. OK, never mind. Let's. I, uh, OK or not? Still working on it. So I think my parameter got different. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Okay, you can use the parameter because I, I use the IR540 data sheet. Okay, these are the data sheet parameter. 0 0.04, uh, 16, 10, 4, yeah.
Uh, so your temperature temperature source right is around twenty five, right? Uh, for the transistor. Uh, for the temperature source, the ambient, I think. It's twenty five. Ah yes, right? twenty five. Yes. And then the, the sister is sixty point three five, right? Sixty point three five. Yes. Yeah, sixty point three five. Okay. You get the same answer. <laughs> I got thirty point five temperature. This one. Yeah, yeah. The degree Celsius. I my my display on the power law power dissipation is the same as yours. Just that I got different on the temperature. Okay. The thermal port setting is it correct? Uh, which part? Uh? Oh, I think the junction and case thermal time constant, your one is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, right? My one is that 0 to 10. Oh, okay. Uh, then it, it should be here. The constant is 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. Hmm. Oh, See, the default is 10, 10, right? Your, oh, okay. 0 to 10. Mm -hmm. Is it from from the data sheet also? Uh, okay, this one, no. This one data sheet didn't provide. This is the... The thermal time constant. Thermal time constant is how fast uh, is a is a time of how fast the thermal can actually propagate conduct lah. Okay, so for transistor is actually very fast. So it's zero point one second. Uh, okay, sir. I got the same answer. So yeah. And because if you use the default is 10, right? And you run at two minutes, the temperature like is still like very low because you know in, in real fact, right? The temperature rise very, very fast. The moment you turn on, right? Like I said, it, it depends on the device. Okay, for CPU, it it is slower. It does not heat up, but for transistor, it's really heat up almost like immediately. Lah. So that's why this time constant determine the speed, lor. Hmm. So, okay. Anything else you all don't don't know the parameter? Please let me know. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got one here already. So the idea is when we simulate any circuit, all right, in the past, we do not consider thermal. We only consider or oh, how much current you got, how much voltage you got, and then, you know, that's all. Nothing wrong. We are E&E, &E, uh, you know, uh, engineer. That is what we concern. Okay, but of course, in real life, Okay, thermal play a very important role. Okay, or else, you know, your your products or the power supply that you design, okay, uh, may not last. Now, once you get this done, right, then you can start to play around, okay, with the hissing. Okay, that means you can change this value. Okay, remember in the last class, I mentioned about the kissing. Okay, now this is what we are doing today, right? Okay, so I already try my very best uh, to make this as simple as possible already. Uh. Okay, so the solution to this is hissing. And like I said, okay, hissing comes in various sizes and pattern. Uh, the most important is, okay, you know, the hissing what we call this uh, thermal resistance.
okay so all the hissing you all buy okay please get to know what are their thermal resistance okay so here we got two hissing one this is the very small one is 24 right so 24 let's say okay now i put this hissing in now okay so i will get 24 and then i run you can see the temperature go down almost half from 83 okay to 48 which is considered safe for the transistor already you see i just simply add in this that's mean i add only 1.3 ringgit ah, to to my transistor okay uh yeah it will solve the thermal issue that's all and this type of hissing right are commonly used in what we use in most of your handphone charger they cannot put a very big one especially handphone charger right it's very crucial and also if you buy those counterfeit one ah, it's cheaper because they don't put hissing inside and it will be very very hot okay and then of course when it get hot right it won't damage immediately but it shorten the lifespan ah, of that charger lah. You know, maybe you use after one year or I don't know. And then the original one is you know, well designed with all the thermal consideration, right? It, it lasts almost forever until your phone, you know, uh, as long as your phone can survive. Uh. So that's the main difference. OK, that's the main difference. You can see I just add uh, one ringgit 30 cent. Of course, uh, those like Apple, Samsung, the charger are really you know, there are many engineers, a team of engineers to, to design, you know. They tested all this, simulate all the possible, and of course, they will consider the cost, okay, about the profit as well. So with this thermal, right, it's not just for you to know the temperature or for fun or for your exam, but it helps you like, okay, in this design, you know that mm, I need to buy that uh, hissing so that I'll be much more safer, you know. It won't burn my hand at least, right? 85 degrees will, will show burn your hand. So it goes down, okay, to this. So this is the thermal and electrical, the advantage of it. Okay, back to the hissing again. And the hissing, like I said, uh, every hissing, uh, including CPU hissing, uh, Thermal resistance. You see, we know computer, right? They got also the hissing with fan. Okay, what's the difference? Fan provide what we call false conviction. Hissing only pro, pro, pro provide the conduction heat, but at a very low thermal resistance, so that it can it can dissipate the heat to the air to the ambient faster. So that it reduce the temperature, but for CPU, okay, it's much more hotter. So much more hotter. What happens that you need to it dissipate faster. That's why they put a fan there. So with the fan there, okay, it actually helps to help the conviction process. Technical term it call force conviction. Now, all this fan, I believe most of you are won't care, right? You go lao ya say, oh, I want fan. For my i7, then the shop people will say, okay, you want the cheap, cheap one or the expensive one? They put a set in front of you. Then you will normally say, I look for the most Lang Jai one, right? The most sleek design or pattern pattern. Okay. Uh, and then of course you will say, hey, uh, in the intermediate price, lah, right? These are the common people will think of. And I tell you, not every shop people selling this know about this. If you go there and ask them, okay, what is the thermal resistance or all these three? Uh, that I'm not sure. Lah. If those are technically good enough, they should be able to answer you. If that shop is professional. Lah. You see, even this one, right? If you buy this from RS component, right? It's 0 0.16. 0 0.16. 
zero point one six. Ah, we are talking about. We see just now is sixty lah, twenty four already can go down, right? If you put zero point one six, we call with a fan conviction. Okay, then let's see what happen, no? Of course lah, not practical lah. Your transistor so small, you you put something like that. Twenty five, meaning that is almost ambient temperature, right? The heat dissipate with the fan and the big heat scene, ah. No feel for the transistor. Hmm. So, okay, you can see there are all sort of things. Uh, like this one, okay, it never tell you the uh, thermal resistance. Uh, okay, for me, I don't buy lah because I cannot tell how how well it, 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 it do the heat transfer. Okay. So, in fact, right, those original fan uh, from Intel, uh, you know, you buy the CPU, it comes with fan already. Ma. It's actually properly designed already. You use the original fan, uh, definitely no problem. But I know some of the people, they say, ah, this fan too small, lah. the hissing doesn't look good, lah. no LED, no light, right? They go and buy the, the pattern pattern one put in, like, they thought like, whoa, even Jungle, I tell you. It's sometimes, unless the thermal resistance is the same or lower than the original, or else you are just wasting money lah, to make your CPU look cool. Lah. <laughs> look cool, ah. Not really make it cool, ah. It doesn't look wow, very cool, but it's hit up lah. Uh, so these are the the thing. Okay, now about CPU, uh, not CPU, pula. Hissing design. Okay, I think I need to be a bit faster already, am I? Hissing design. I think I yeah. Okay, this is just a website. Okay. You can actually design your own hissing by, you know, put in all the dimension of the fin of the height. Okay, and this website, right, it will calculate the thermal resistance for you. So once you design this to achieve the thermal resistance that you want, because you cannot have like exactly 22, right, or, or something, you know, so you can design something like that. So you can send this design, okay, to you know to the depend on if most of them are using aluminium uh, okay for the heat transfer so they can cut it for you okay so you can even design your own hissing hmm. so like you know the thickness of this okay let, let's see the myhissing.com okay. Okay, not rich. My hit sing.com with S. Okay. My hit sing. Okay, so this is a uh, yeah. A uh, software, you know, extra. Okay, I just simply put some number lah. Uh, okay, how many fin? Okay, five. Thickness. Okay. Oh, fin has to be as thin as possible, actually. It, you look at your car radiator, uh, in front of the radiator, right? All the fin are very thin run. Okay, so it dissipates the, the heat, you know, from, from the water. And then let's say, okay, I'm not a robot, obviously, okay. <laughs> uh, see, oops, something wrong. So what's wrong? Uh, please check your input. Wait, uh. I don't know, because I'm not a hissing designer. Uh, oh, board. Wow, wow, wow. I still cannot. You all try lah, okay? So your fit problem is it because you have three mm and then times with number of fin three twenty four right twenty four and then your fit only ten. Oh, oh really ah? Okay, which which one? With. So I should use. 
hundred like a eh, the height okay uh, i think this number should be okay right let's say i put all 10 10 10 okay because you know then your fin thickness is three right fin thickness is three so and you have number of fin you have egg oh, and then egg oh okay 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 fin thickness um okay let's try oh okay Oh, okay. Now it, it, it gave me some range. Lah. Okay, with airflow. Okay, this airflow is the fan, right? If you add a fan, okay, with a higher airflow, and this will be the thermal resistance. Okay, 0 0.5 is almost no airflow. Lah. So you design this, right? You will get like 11.4. Okay, so it will give you this, you know, set of uh yeah then you know oh this is the thermal resistance i'm going to have hmm. uh very good website lah, okay for you to play around but i have no i don't have the equation to govern this ah okay these are most of the mechanical parts already lah. Hmm. so let's say Okay, so this is what happened, what you see in real power electronic converter. You will see that these are the most fat, right? They are actually screw on the big heat sink like that. Okay, it can be as small as this one, as we know that this size is around like 20 to 30, right? If you are experienced enough, well, look at the heat sink, you roughly can guess already. And of course, you know, we can have, you can see these are also another, you know, you see this four transistor. Requires so big heat sink, you know, that means it's going to be very, very hot. That's why they need to have a big heat sink. It's for four transistors, of course, right? It's not one. So it's very important, like I say, for power electronic design, all this heat, heat sink. Okay, you can see they always need to, need to have heat sink okay. for all these uh, power transistor. All right, so. Okay, the last part is uh, the K and the C thing. Uh, all right, so I put here for you to do a reference. And then, uh, yeah, I think we are done for the thermal. Okay, for today. Just nice uh, today class, we can finish this part. Uh. Okay, uh, hopefully by next week, uh, yeah, we can finish the whole of this chapter. Uh. Hmm. So we have done our transistor already because next chapter is going to be thyristor already. So to do a little bit of recap, okay? So we started with transistor. We talked about the transistor characteristic, okay? The output characteristic, okay? How to model it, okay? According to data sheet and get the performance or characteristic as same as, as close as to the data sheet. And then after that, we talk about switching losses, okay? So transistor always in the switching mode on, on and off, okay? And uh, rise time, uh, fall time, all this information are also in the data sheet, means that it's, it's a real happening phenomenon. And after that, because of switching, we have this uh, power loss, right? And this power loss converted into heat. And of course, most of the E engineer, they, they don't look at this problem. So I just push more further. Then we look into this heat problem. Now this heat problem, we know that obviously the solution is the heat sink. But again, not many people know about uh, the heat sink. We have to look at the thermal resistor. We always look at how big is it, how look nice it looks. Okay, so uh, I also talk about how to model this in MATLAB so that you have idea. When you put in this heat sink, okay, how much temperature you can bring down. So I started with today, we do electrical circuit, we do a separate thermal circuit, and then we combine them together as now for the, you know, let's say if you get four transistor, right? Like, uh, yeah, in future, you're going to do that anyway for the, the bridge. You need four transistor. Then you have to consider, you know, wow, four of them heat up together. 
okay, how big is the, what we call this uh, thermal resistance that you need. It's going to be in your assignment as well, okay. Uh, part of it is going to be a thermal resistance analysis. Okay, so, all right, I think, uh, yeah, it's almost time already. Any questions? So I got a question. Yes. So, sir, because you say his CPU, right? So, comparing with the fan cooling and the water cooling, right, actually, which one is better? Of course, water cooling is much more lower resistance. Oh, okay. It, you see, our car is using water cooling. Water cooling plus fan, you know, plus hissing is three. Water, right, can actually help to remove the heat faster than the fan. Mm, liquid, ma. Mm. Okay, sir. Uh, because you see, what fan does is that fan only provide airflow, and it very much depends on the ambient, right? If your ambient is 30 degree, la, it doesn't help much unless you put it in the aircon room. But if you use the cooler, liquid cooler, the liquid can be like 10 degree or, or less, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, and then it passes the, the tube they use, uh, it acts as hissing already, you know, the radiator of our car. It acts at the hissing. Okay, if you look carefully, uh, it's a very interesting design. Hey, radiator, sorry. Uh. Hey, radio, hey, radiator, correct. <laughs> See, we can find hmm, a nice image of this or not. Uh. Okay, you see the car radiator, right? In fact, they are pipe of water. Okay, see any good one. Pipe of water, okay? These are all the fin, no? These are all the very small fin. The pipe flow in and out, right? So the whole radiator itself is already a big piece of heat sink, you know? And then it adds fan to have forced com uh, conviction, okay? So that it, it will help reduce uh you know the the car engine uh heat see these are the radiator the water in and water out mm. so they use the same theory for cpu lah mm. okay sir all right okay all right so uh yeah if no question i think it's time already we I need we need to leave the class okay and then like I said for the